you know, Virtual Pilots, it's Requiem. Today we're going to look at the PV-1B site and how to dive bomb with it. It's a site that's used in German aircraft such as the Arado 234 and it's connected to an automatic bomb aiming computer called a BZA and this constantly calculates a bomb release point which is shown on the site itself. So here's the symbology on the site. You've got site angle range first. This runs from the middle of the site down to the bottom. Then you've got your impact point. This is going to be continuously calculated by that bomb aiming computer. And then you've got the actual site angle. And this is going to be where the impact point is along the site angle range. Think of the site angle as the difference between the airplane's flight path and the trajectory of the bomb. So I created this picture to help you visualize a little bit better as to what all these components are and how they fit in together. Now there are certain restrictions on use of this site. Um, I did find this in German, so I've translated it into English, so you can pause the video and have a look at the different restrictions upon this site when using it. So for the dive bombing technique in this, your initial altitude will be between 2.5 and 4,000 meters. The throttle will have to be above 6,000 RPM. This will help you avoid any flame outs. Autopilot, you'll engage that along with the channels. Stabilizer trim, set nose down. The target height is going to be set. You're going to set the wind speed accordingly, depending if it's a headwind or a tailwind. And the contact altimeter, you can set to 1,500 to 2,000 meters if you like. Alright, so our target is off in the distance there. It's going to be a bridge. It's next to the city. So I'm going to engage the autopilot and then the pitch roll in your channels. And then I'm going to go to the site and I'm going to use the yaw control to turn the airplane and get ourselves aligned um, with the bridge. Now I'm going into this with a headwind of about 18 to 20 kilometers per hour, which is um, 5 meters a second. If you need to verify this, you can use uh, the bomb site. Here we're going to set the stabilizer trim to full nose down, because we're going to be getting to a high airspeed in this dive. Here we'll set the wind speed to a negative uh, 20 kilometers per hour. The elevation of this area and the bridge combined is going to be about 60 70 meters so we can set that and then the contact altimeter I'm going to set for 2000 meters this is going to indicate um, when I should begin my pull out so we go back into the site just keep ourselves aligned and if we wait until the bridge passes to the bottom of the site before we push over that's going to give us a dive angle of 25 degrees because that's how long the site angle range is so we'll disengage the pitch channel on the autopilot and push over with the stick and we'll leave the other channels engaged so that way the autopilot's going to maintain our current heading so we'll keep the bridge nice and steady. So the bridge is in the middle of the site, dive angle is going to be about 25 degrees, the airspeed increasing so that impact point is going to start moving up the range. we we'll wait for the contact altimeter to start making the noise. Begin the recovery, just adjust your pull out to keep the impact point steady, then relax the back pressure momentarily, release the bombs on the bridge and continue the recovery. Now you can zoom climb up if you wanted to, but if anyone's chasing you, you're probably better off doing a shallow climb and uh, maintaining your fast airspeed to get away. So normally when attacking a bridge, I'll attack along the length of the bridge and not from the side because it's going to be much harder to score a direct hit um, from the side like this. This is just to show accuracy. Also, you don't have to use the autopilot channels if you don't want to. Um, I just feel like it's easier if you have a big target to just rely on the pitch yourself and let the airplane control the other components. That way you'll be able to stay nice and straight, wings level, which will help you have a good release. Now this site corrects for the crosswind as well if you want. Um, the site circle is going to be 6 degrees wide, so that's going to be 3 degrees left and right. So if you're going to perform a crosswind correction, it's going to be 1 degree of correction for every 10 km per hour of a direct crosswind. So if you had 30 km per hour of crosswind, 
this is going to need three degrees of correction, which is going to place it on the edge of the site. So when you think of the context of dropping the bomb, you want to have the target aligned with a line that moves down from that point in the site. All right, so we're going to attack with a direct crosswind. Uh, there's a runway over there, which I've placed an airplane at the beginning. So it's going to require a little bit of a different technique. Um, because we're attacking with a crosswind, there's going to be no wind component to input because that's either headwind or tailwind. Um, elevation is set. I'm not going to bother with the contact out timber on this one. So if you are planning on attacking with a direct crosswind, it's important that you give yourself enough distance um, because you need to approach the target using a headwind or a tailwind. And um, after you make the turn towards the target, you need to have enough distance in order to actually still be able to see the target within your sight um, before you initiate the dive. So what we're looking at here is the runway is behind that cloud right now and um, we need to wait for it to approach either the three o'clock position because we're turning to the right or if we needed to turn left we'll be waiting to pass our nine o'clock position um, because that way once we make this turn left or right by the time we finish it, we're going to be flying with a direct crosswind towards our target. Now in this case, I have a tailwind, so I will need to turn slightly earlier to account for the wind pushing me further along. So we're starting to approach 3 o'clock. We'll start the turn. Okay, so I'm going to turn to go slightly past the runway because the crosswind is going to be pushing me uh, from right to left. So I'm going to get the autopilots on and look in the sight. I'm going to use the yaw control to get myself aligned. And this is going to be, you know, about 20 kilometers per hour again. So accounting for the fact that I want um, one degree for every 10 kilometers per hour of correction, I'm going to place you know, this target approximately um, two-thirds of the way along the line. Alright, so the beginning of the runway where the target is, is passing under the site. I'm going to disengage all the autopilot channels, uh, simply because I will need to make small corrections during this, so it's important that you're able to do that by turning off all those channels. I'm going to align the beginning of the runway, about two-thirds, across the site, accounting for that crosswind. It's the same technique. The impact point is coming up. Now there's no horn in this one, so you've got to be careful to listen for the wind, make sure you don't have a speed. You start recovering, imagining that line, and then releasing when the impact point is beside it, and then you can recover. So attacking with a crosswind is more difficult obviously, but with practice um, you'll be able to come close to hitting the target. So this, uh, we're going to do a low level attack, so you don't necessarily have to dive bomb from way up high if you don't really want to. Uh, you can fly lower and do it. Um, obviously that comes with more threat from any aircraft though, so that's something to keep in mind. So you can see, because we're flying low and fast, the impact point is already on the site. So if you did want to do a level bombing aspect for this, uh, you could just use the impact site and release when the target passes underneath it. Um, but because there is any aircraft in this field, I'm going to turn the autopilot off and I'm just going to do a weaving maneuver um, up towards the target to try and avoid getting shot. So it's important to make sure that when you release the bomb, whether it's in dive bombing or level or shallow dive or whatever that you need to have wings level because you can see that as I'm initiating these turns the impact point is coming up so this isn't a valid release point you need to make sure that the wings are level when you release in order for that impact point to be valid so my target's going to be the hangar on the back left there just trying to weave left and right and as I get closer Gonna get the wings level and point at it and then let the impact point pass over it, release the bomb and then start the dive away while weaving to avoid the gunfire. 
So when you are making passes like this or other passes when you need to make corrections, uh, it's important that you should try and limit your angular bank to about 15 degrees and also have a stable flight path at wings level before you release. This way you allow the computer to update the impact point so it's at an accurate position uh, when you release it over the target. That's your tutorial for the dive on with the PV-1B. Remember to fly safe and check six.